Welcome to Texas Heart Institute educational programs on innovative technologies and techniques. My name is Von Krasier. I'm an interventional cardiologist at Texas Heart Institute and Baylor CHI Medical Center. The topic today is uh, silent leaflet thrombosis, or SLT, after TAVR. What are the causes and how to treat it? Now, post-TAVR valve thrombosis uh, has been uh, described uh, with uh, different names, and the most common is silent leaflet thrombosis, or uh, subclinical leaflet thrombosis, or hypoattenuated leaflet thickening or HALT. Uh, obviously, other uh, names have been used uh, to describe this uh, problem. So there are certain issues of importance related to silent leaflet thrombosis, and we will discuss uh, several of them that are of importance. Number one, incidence, then predictors of silent leaflet thrombosis, the effect of antithrombotic therapy on silent leaflet thrombosis, consequences of this particular problem and complication, and issues uh, related to uh, valve geometry and design uh, that are playing a role in silent leaflet thrombosis. And then we'll talk a little bit more about pathophysiology of silent leaflet thrombosis and why is it less common after SAVR, and are uh, procedural factors playing a significant role in this particular problem. Let's talk a little bit about incidence of silent leaflet thrombosis. Silent leaflet thrombosis in surgical bioprosthesis has been described to occur between 0.8 to 4% by several investigators. Now, silent leaflet thrombosis post TAVR is significantly higher from previous publications and ranges between 4.5 to all the way up to 40%. So obviously, this could be a serious problem. There are numerous publications that were addressing this problem related to subclinical leaflet thrombosis in SAVR bioprosthesis uh, and also TAVR. Uh, this particular study uh, is an observational study and it was analysis of silent leaflet thrombosis post TAVR and SAVR bioprosthesis using 4D CT or ultra fast CT and they analyzed the effects of anticoagulation on valve hemodynamics and also clinical outcomes from two registries, savory and resolve registries. Uh, the patients that were included in this study had to have interpretable CAT scans as shown here with 3D images and 890 patients qualified for this particular analysis. The data from this uh, particular publication related to the use of 4DCT uh, on the evidence of reduced leaflet motion in uh, multiple prosthesis types is shown here. Uh, we can see that uh, with Edwards prosthesis, uh, which includes the Sapien, Sapien XT, and Sapien 3 prosthesis, the incidence was uh, 13%. With the newer generation, Edward Sapien 3 prosthesis, the incidence was a little bit higher, it was 16%. Now in comparison, uh, Evolute or Evolute core valve uh, incidence of leaflet thrombosis was 6%, which is lower than from the publications related to Edwards uh, and prosthesis. Lotus uh, had a 14% incidence of silent leaflet thrombosis, and the highest one was reported by Portico with 30% incidence of silent leaf thrombosis. Now, as we also mentioned previously, SAVR has a significantly lower incidence of subclinical leaf thrombosis, somewhere in the range of 3 to 4%. Here we can see uh, the CT images showing various types of uh, prosthesis and uh, also the incidence uh, uh, and appearance of the thrombosis uh, in the leaflets. And we can see that actually the most pronounced abnormality is during systole where the leaflet's excursion is limited and that could affect uh, one leaflet or two leaflets or all three leaflets. And therefore, silent 
leaf red thrombosis can present itself with, with a variety of shades and severities from very mild and uh, almost impossible to identify with imaging techniques to a very pronounced uh, or severe where you have complete uh, valve thrombosis that could lead to serious consequences. So from this particular study, a silent leaf red thrombosis on anticoagulants was 4% versus 15% on dual antiplatelet therapy. Obviously, this is a significantly different number and carries a high uh, statistical significance between those two modalities of treatment. Interestingly enough, uh, in this particular study, silent leaf red thrombosis on a newer uh, anticoagulants was low, it was 3%, while solid leaf thrombosis on Coumadin was 4%. So silent leaf thrombosis has serious consequences as we can see here, particularly related to stroke and TR, uh, TIA rates. So we can see that uh, when there was a normal valve motion, the incidence was only 3%, versus 10% when it, there was evidence on the CT with presence of silent leaf red thrombosis, which was statistically significant. Another study from Rashid that was presented at TCT in 2017 looked at the variety of predictors, potential factors playing a role in a so-called hypoattenuated leaflet thickening or HALT and we can see that uh, anticoagulants at discharge were the most uh, reliable predictor, meaning that patients that did not receive anticoagulants had a higher instance of thrombosis. Lotus valve also had a higher instance of thrombosis from this particular study. Hansen and co-workers published in uh, Journal of American Cardiology uh, <clears throat> in 2016 their data on antithrombotic therapy and the risk of thrombosis post-TAVR. And as we can see, uh, there is very interesting information that appeared from their study. The incidence of uh, SLT was high when patients received only aspirin, but it was uh, a little bit lower for patients that were treated with clopidogrel and significantly lower for patients that were treated on a dual antiplatelet therapy and even lower on patients that treated, were treated with warfarin or a combination of warfarin and aspirin. And the lowest incidence was for patients that were treated with uh, warfarin, aspirin, and clopidogrel. Obviously, this combination of uh, all three agents uh, has a potential risk of uh, uh, bleeding, which should be taken into consideration. And uh, in their study, NOAX only uh, also showed low incidence of uh, thrombosis. So from Hansen's study, uh, using uh, 3D uh, CT, we can see that the incidence of uh, thrombosis or silent leaf and thrombosis was 7% with Sapien XT and Sapien 3 trans heart valves. And as far as predictors are concerned, they uh, stated that larger valves had a higher incidence of silent leaf and thrombosis. And another very important factor was no uh, warfarin after TAVR. There was, in their study, no significant difference between different type of trans -heart, heart valve generations. Further information related to uh, treatment of silent leaf and thrombosis. Uh, this particular study from Resolve and Saver Registry showed that resolution of, um, on anticoagulants uh, of silent leaf and thrombosis was seen in 100% of patients uh, and 91% of uh, silent leaf and thrombosis persisted for those that were not treated with anticoagulants. Now, there was an interesting study that was carried on uh, and this was an international study, including 143 sites in 15 countries. Over 1,600 patients that underwent TAVR were randomized to 10 milligrams of rivaroxaban 
and aspirin for 90 days um, uh, and versus just rubaroxaban or uh, dual antiplatelet therapy for 90 days followed by treatment with aspirin. This study was terminated prematurely because they found that patients that were just treated with uh, rivaroxaban uh, had a higher incidence of mortality, 6.8%, versus patients that were treated with dual antiplatelet therapy where the incidence of uh, death was 3.3%. So this was to a certain degree surprising because the previous smaller non-randomized uh, trials revealed that uh, dual antiplatelet therapy was uh, inferior to uh, treatment with uh, NOAX. There is another study that's all going at the present time. It's also, also a multinational, multi-center study, so-called Atlantis study, which uh, uh, is evaluating a different uh, NOAC uh, for uh, uh, follow-up of patients with um, TAVR to determine if uh, NOACs are beneficial in preventing silent leaflet thrombosis. So what are the consequences and importance of silent leaflet thrombosis? As we have seen, recent studies indicate that silent leaflet thrombosis may lead to earlier valve failure. And therefore, FDA has expressed their concerns and have called for prompt attention to this clinical problem. So American College of Cardiology and American Heart Association uh, recommendations are based on the latest information related to SLT uh, post uh, TAVR. And their recommendations are the bioprosthetic mitral and aortic valve should be treated with vitamin K antagonists for at least three to six months in low risk patients for bleeding. That will be class two uh, level of uh, evidence from the data that has been published so far. As far as TAVR is concerned, their recommendations are the use of vitamin K antagonists for at least three months in patients that are considered to be at low risk of bleeding. So let's talk a little bit about uh, issues of importance related to solid leaflet thrombosis as far as valve uh, design and valve geometry are concerned. We have at the present time three different uh, tower prosthesis approved in the United States for clinical use. Two of them that are most commonly used are shown here, Sapien 3 and Core Valve. Sapien 3 is a balloon expandable valve and core valve is a self expandable valve. Sapien 3 has a different design, therefore, than a core valve, and it consists of a metallic stainless steel frame, uh, bovine uh, pericardium leaflets, uh, and also polyester material on the outside uh, for prevention of uh, aortic uh, perivalvular leak and then uh, suture material that integrates all those uh, three components together. Uh, this valve is uh, suited for uh, annular deployment uh, versus core valve that is uh, self-expanding with a nitinol uh, stent frame and uh, porcine uh, uh, leaflets uh, with the suture material and the newer generation um, Valve also has a, a external um, a porcelain uh, material wrapped around the uh, nitinol frame for prevention of a perivalvular leak. Uh, this uh, particular study uh, that was uh, published in Annals of Thoracic Surgery in 2017 looked at the deployment of the valves uh, in, at the annular level and at the supraannular level as far as uh, turbulence is concerned and stagnation of the blood flow and a potential risk of uh, thrombosis and silent leaflet thrombosis. And they uh, found that supraannular valve in valve implantation uh, reduces blood stasis on the transcatheter aortic valves. Now, a little bit more about uh, 
uh, analysis of uh, so-called uh, supravalvular versus uh, supraannular versus annular uh, prosthesis is shown here. For instance, surgical perimount prosthesis is a supraannular uh, deployment or suturing of the valve. And this one shows uh, the lowest uh, incidence of uh, so-called uh, neo-sinus formation and the problems with thrombosis versus uh, sapien valve that is placed at the annual level where there is a creation of so-called neosinus, as is shown here schematically uh, on the upper panel, where actually uh, platelet deposition and fibrin deposition can occur between the leaflet and the uh, stainless steel frame and also polyester material that's on the outside. There is no washout here, and that is a potential reason for blood stagnation and also the position of platelets and fibrins. So creation of the neosinus and narrowing of the old uh, existing sinus is a potential problem with newer generation uh, prosthesis as shown here. So in their description, silent leaf and thrombosis risk factors include low deployment of the valve, overexpansion of the valve, neosinus uh, flow stagnation, and potential endothelial damage uh, with balloon expansion of the valves that were suboptimally expanded or aggressively expanded or additional use of balloon expansion to uh, achieve optimal results as far as gradients are concerned and also in prevention and treatment of perivalvular leak. Uh, further information from their data is uh, shown here where they show uh, flow dynamics uh, and stagnation of the blood in uh, neosinuses and uh, they describe the geometric confinement of the TAVR by the calcified native valve or the failed bioprosthesis increases blood resistance time or stasis on the trans aortic valve leaflets and they postulate that this may act as a factor in valve thrombosis. Further analysis of um, their data revealed that thrombus volume increased with the depth of core valve deployment height, but it did not change to any significant degree as far as sapien 3 valve de deployment is concerned. And this obviously has something to do with the design of the valve. While one can be played, placed in a supraannular position, and the other one is uh, always in the annular position. They also show here in their study that sapien 3 valves without thrombus were underexpanded on an average by 10% in diameter when rather than when we see thrombus formation where the valves were overexpanded. So overexpanded uh, sapien valves in their uh, description were at higher risk of narrower neosinus and formation of thrombus. No such relationship in their study existed among core valves. So in conclusion, Silent leaflet thrombosis occurs frequently with bioprosthetic valves, more frequently post staver than after saver. Also, silent leaflet thrombosis is associated with higher gradients and higher incidence of TIA and stroke. Current evidence also indicates that SLT is minimized or eliminated with vitamin K antagonists. The risk benefit profile of anticoagulation should be evaluated in future randomized clinical trials. However, current studies raise the issue of whether vitamin K antagonists or NOACs are more appropriate in certain subsets of patients than dual antiplatelet therapy after TAVR. The benefits of newer anti platelet antithrombotic agents for prevention of Silent leaflet thrombosis is still unknown and the studies are ongoing at the present time. 
Silent leaflet thrombosis can be effectively treated with vitamin K antagonists, but not with dual antiplatelet therapy. And finally, the impact of valve geometry and its position on silent leaflet thrombosis varies according to the different valve types and may guide to better future in valve design. Thank you very much for your attention. <music>